America's pastime is back in the headlines for the wrong reasons. Alex Rodriguez, the star player of one of its oldest and most successful baseball teams, the New York Yankees, has been suspended for 211 games for suspected use of banned drugs. It is the latest in a series of scandals that have hit the sporting world recently. So what does it take to put an end to doping? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. Well, he's baseball's highest paid star and now Alex Rodriguez is fighting to keep his career alive. The 38-year-old is one of a number of players linked to a clinic in Florida that's been accused of supplying them with performance-enhancing drugs. It's become a sensational case in the U.S. and once again putting a spotlight on doping in sport. Rodriguez has been banned from playing for his team, the New York Yankees, till the end of the 2014 season. He denies he's done anything wrong and has filed an appeal with Major League Baseball. Well, joining me now to talk more about uh, this, uh, we have our three guests from Washington, D.C. Dave Zirin, an American sports writer for The Nation magazine. Dave is the author of Bad Sports, How Owners Are Ruining the Games We Love. From London, we have Michelle Varokin, director of Sporting Integrity, a consultancy advising on anti-doping in sports. And joining us via Skype from Long Island in New York, we have Vinny Milano, otherwise known as Bald Vinny. He runs a diehard Yankees fan club called Bleacher Creatures. Vinny hasn't missed a Yankees game since 2009. Good to have you all with us, uh, gentlemen. Dave Zirin, if I could start with you. Now, is, is this punishment for, for Alex Rodriguez uh, harsh enough or, or is he getting off uh, lightly? Well, it's the harshest punishment in the history of Major League Baseball for people who've run afoul on the performance enhancing drugs issue. So by that measure alone, I think we can say it's certainly quite harsh. Um, I would also make the case that it's also a very ill-informed punishment because the entire weight of it is falling on the shoulders of Alex Rodriguez, yet the New York Yankees are actually going to benefit when it's all said and done. In, in as much as $34 million of Alex Rodriguez's salary will go back into their coffers. And that's part of the problem with how they do performance enhancing drugs is that the punishment falls entirely on the player's shoulders when in fact what we're looking at is a far more systemic problem. Yeah, we'll talk more about the implications that all of this has um, uh, on the game uh, as a whole and, and just who's responsible for all this. But I, I want to uh, turn to Michelle Varokin and um, much of the focus of this uh, investigation, this particular investigation, has been on this uh, biogenesis uh, clinic in Florida. Uh, as an anti-doping specialist, how do you see the role that they're uh, alleged to have played in all of this? I think it is very difficult when we have uh, treatments that are available to the general public and yet athletes um, are being told that they cannot access certain treatments. So I think some clarity of the regulations and certainly the, uh, the acceptable sports medicine practices that go on around sport uh, need to be debated openly because otherwise we do get this confusion. We do get a question mark over whether it is possible for athletes to receive the same treatments as, as other people um, and why should they not but on the other hand if it is using clearly uh, designated performance enhancing substances which are prohibited then the athletes have to bear the strict liability for that they're the ones using them they're the ones who could be benefiting all right, Vinny Milano, as a, as a, a baseball fan and an avid uh, uh, New York Yankees fan, the team that A-Rod plays for, what, what's your take on all of this? Well, I, I mean, I, I think the situation's unfortunate. I really think they're coming down very hard on one particular guy. Um, you know, as I stated a little earlier, it, there needs to be wide, wide range changes to the whole policy. I mean, these guys aren't really taking drugs or, 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 or any enhancing, you know, stimulants in order to get themselves bigger is more of a recovery thing um, to help their muscles you know uh, recover from injury and come back and and play on a high level on a consistent basis so it, i think more reform has to be done it's just unfortunate that it's all coming down on this one guy's shoulders so you think you think he's being unfairly uh, scapegoated then is that, that that's pretty much your view well i'm sure he has some sort of, of role in it i mean he wouldn't be tied up if there wasn't some sort of, of guilt but i think the suspension is a little harsh 
uh, for somebody who hasn't turned up a test positive, uh, you know, it, it just seems a little excessive. Dave Zirin. Good. I mean, yeah, we should be clear uh, with the audience that Alex Rodriguez hasn't been suspended for performance enhancing drug use alone. Major League Baseball has leaked to the press that Alex Rodriguez played a role in procuring clients for biogenesis. They have leaked that he has played a role in trying to interfere with Major League Baseball's investigation by trying to buy evidence from the owner of the clinic, uh, Anthony Bosch, the disgraced Anthony Bosch. And I think it's important to realize that. But part of the problem is that Alex Rodriguez says that he hasn't even seen the evidence in front of him. And so it's really unclear the degree to which this is a railroad job because Alex Rodriguez is the most famous name in Major League Baseball. And they want to make an example of the most famous name as a way to change the culture in the locker room. Finney Milano, you, you were shaking your head to that earlier. I always disagree with that a little bit. I mean, A-Rod had a, a press conference here in New York a couple of days ago when he first came back, and he had mentioned that he had seen the evidence that is against him, and he still decides to appeal the suspension. Uh, you know, all the other evidence, you know, about purchasing evidence, MLB bought evidence from Anthony Bosch just as much as A-Rod is, you know, being accused of trying to offer a payment as well. Uh, it, it's really a dirty, dirty story. Uh, it, it's kind of ridiculous in a way that this doesn't come upon in any other American professional sport. I mean, this entire biogenesis clinic had to have athletes from NBA, uh, NFL, you know, uh, mixed martial arts fighting, and no other sports organization is pursuing it with such legality as MLB, uh, as our commissioner Bud Selig is against uh, Alex Rodriguez and, and Ryan Braun, who also, you know, kind of flaunted in the face of of a steroid test about a year ago. But Billy Milano, I, I want to put this to you. I mean, uh, I'm sure a lot of fans like yourself would, would agree with, with what you've, you've just said there. But, but aren't, aren't there also plenty of people, not least of all in, in New York, who are pretty fed up with, with A-Rod and, and all of the baggage uh, that he currently carries? Isn't this just the, the latest in a, in a long line of alleged transgressions and, and, and bad headlines surrounding him? Look, let, let's be perfectly honest. This guy is not the most well-liked person in sports. Uh, that's just a given, and I think that's been for several years since he signed a big deal. Uh, and I think it comes with the contract money. It's very, very hard to live up to that kind of money with performance uh, results on the field. And you know, when you put yourself under that that glass eye, uh, every step you make, everything is is magnified. And I think when you have a problem such as this, uh, it becomes exacerbated to an extent where it's a media circus. I think everybody is tired of it. I don't want to speak for all Yankee fans. But get on the field and play some ball. Let's win some games. I mean, it's the middle of August. We're five and a half games out of a wild card spot. We need to win. I don't care about what you, what drugs you take to make you a better player. Uh, if you're, if you're trying to come back from an injury and you're seeking treatment that's going to help get you on the field, um, not something that try, you're trying to bulk up and and mash home runs like we saw uh, about 10, 12 years ago with the Maguires and the Sosas. I mean, these guys are trying to rehab themselves to get themselves back on a field. Uh, and, and maintain a healthy playing level. And uh, I, I think we're taking them to court for that. I, I, I think it's really unfortunate. Yeah, let's, let's put that point then to Michelle Varokin. There's some dispute over, uh, as to what this, this clinic actually did, whether it was some sort of a, a rehab uh, program, uh, nothing more than that, or the, w whether it went uh, uh, beyond that. Well, again, it's all about the evidence that will come forward. Um, certainly, that's important that that is in the public domain and perhaps other sports may look at that evidence and say, well, that does link some of our athletes and we don't need a positive drug test. We can use this as the evidence of an anti-doping rule violation. And, and that's what the current regulations would allow. But it's important that we look back at the prohibited list that says certain substances may not be used. If there is a genuine medical reason for using them, most sports have a process whereby by virtue of a, a, an independent panel reviewing your application, you may be approved to use that. And, and that has happened on many occasions when athletes have had to use prohibited substances for medical treatment, but it is for a required medical treatment. And one of the difficulties we have, and that's why I think the debate should be held, is, is injury, is aging, 
a, a medical condition that needs uh, open approval of any substance uh, for athletes. And, and I think we have to ask ourselves if we are playing fair by our athletes by having this somewhat shrouded in, in some vagueness about the regulations. All right, Dave Zirin, I know you want to respond. To, I'll let you respond briefly to what you just heard and then, and then we'll move on. Go ahead. Well, just that I, I, I wish that we could have a discussion as the one as intelligent as the one that Michelle um, is is saying that we need to have, because unfortunately, the terms of the debate in the United States strictly are on the level of demonization and criminalization. And we need to have a more intelligent discussion. We need to impose this discussion on the U.S., certainly on the U.S. sports media, but also on Congress and in the halls of power of Major League Baseball, because these are serious medical questions about the difference between use and abuse, about the difference of between uh, player safety and, and player recovery, uh, which are very important, and about the harm that happens when players try to beat tests by taking masking agents and dummy steroids, uh, which happens all over professional sports, not just Major League Baseball. Well, unfortunately, we're not there yet. Instead, it's, it's much more of a witch hunt atmosphere here on the ground. All right, well, we'll try to uh, get into some of that uh, and, and try to broaden this out now. As, as we've just been hearing, Rodriguez is just one of 13 players who's been suspended by Major League Baseball. They join a long list of sports stars who have been accused of doping. In January, uh, of course, U.S. cyclist Lance Armstrong admitted that he cheated his way to a record seven Tour de France victories. He's been banned for life and stripped of his titles. Athletics has also been hit by a string of high-profile doping cases, including sprinters like uh, American Tyson Gay. And in Russia, which will host the World Athletics Championships on Saturday and the Winter Olympics next year, some 40 athletes have been suspended for uh, drug use. Um, Michelle Varokin, if I could turn back to you then. Um, do, do we, th th there is this kind of school of thought here that we, we hold uh, our sportsmen in this, in this stature to, to a kind of unrealistic uh, moral standard. Do, do we allow ourselves to kind of get seduced into seeing them as these sort of squeaky clean role models and then when it turns out they're not, how, how sh surprised should we be about it? Well, I think we're not, we're not being realistic if we're expecting that athletes might not in some way transgress the rules. But I think it's the nature of sport that we hope that it will be played fairly and according to the rules and that those that win have won by some amazing fair means. Uh, and, and of course, sometimes the realities are that it, it, the, we just haven't seen that happen and this does spoil the youngsters, uh, the young people looking at sport, it spoils their role models but uh, I think it's important that as athletes move up through the ranks as they take on those responsibilities and the pressure of being a role model has to be tempered against all the other things that they're being offered. Um, we've seen that with corrupt practices around match fixing, spot fixing, um, the shortcuts that they may be offered in terms of performance enhancing drugs or now even medications to maybe recover more quickly and extend their, their playing careers. So we do know that they're under immense pressure and if we realize that it takes an awful lot for an athlete to be able to succeed and to resist all those pressures. Dave Zirin, how much responsibility do, do the people who run the game um, have in all of this? I know you touched on some of this earlier. Is it the team owners, the, the, the officials at the, at the top of the sport? Should they have done a lot more to in, enforce this and, and done it a lot sooner? Yeah, I once had a player say to me that the problem with performance-enhancing drug enforcement in Major League Baseball is that uh, punishment falls on the shoulders of players but distribution is the responsibility of the team, uh, meaning that there is a whole pipeline that takes place in a Major League Baseball locker room. And the people in power, certainly throughout the 1990s when the game exploded in popularity because of the power surge and the growth of home runs and the amount of home runs and offense that was taking place at the park, I mean, all of this took place at best with benign neglect on, beha on behalf of not only management, but the media as well. I mean, people who willingly turned a blind eye because they didn't want to be the people to ruin the party, the popularity of the game, particularly coming after a nasty 1994 labor battle, which, if, which canceled the World Series for the first time um, in the history of the sport. And so I have a, a real problem 
with some of the hypocrisy of both management and the media on this question because these were the very same folks who were turning a blind eye in the 90s who are now leading the charge. I mean, it reminds me of a quote from uh, one, one of your people over there, uh, Winston Churchill, who said that America always does the right thing only after it's exhausted every other possibility. And it would be nice if there would be a recognition of that because I think it would turn down the volume on some of the demonization and allow for the more serious discussion that Michelle suggested. Well, you bring you certainly bring up an important point there about about the pressure to win and and and, and the sort of turning a blind eye uh, to the whole thing. And, and we're going to play a, a clip now from uh, Ryan Robinson uh, from Next Level Baseball, which is a, pro a professional baseball clinic in Florida that, that offers coaching and instruction to uh, to young players. He, here's what he had to say about the whole thing. If a guy's all of a sudden hitting 30 more homers a year and has gained 25 pounds of muscle, is he going to call the guy in and say, what, what did you do? You need to stop? No, they're not going to do that because their job's on the line. Vina Milano, he makes a, a very valid point there, uh, doesn't he? I mean, if, if there, there are too many people whose, uh, whose careers and jobs are on the line there, and for better or for worse, they're, they're basically just going to keep their mouth shut. Absolutely. I mean, when you when it boils down to it, this is entertainment. Baseball is a sport. Uh, you're there as a fan to be entertained, and these guys are here to entertain you. They want to perform at the best level they can at the highest level, and they're getting paid very handsomely to do so. Uh, so I, I can see why the temptation is there. Everybody here makes amazingly great points. Uh, reform really needs to start uh, at, at a grassroots level. You know, having these older men uh, that are in charge of the establishment that are making rules for what's really more progressive uh, thinking, especially within the baseball culture, really needs to change if they really want to see any big changes within the game. Uh, I just really hope these discussions kind of take foot. Michelle Verokin, is, is there a reluctance uh, from, from what you found to speak out about things like this? Well, certainly some sports um, have done more than others, but I think we also have to temper it in terms of the amount of risk that there really is. And it's perhaps unfair that the current regulations treat all sports equally. So we've been trying to have the debate about the type of performance in, uh, enhancing drugs that we've seen prohibited and whether in actual fact they are performance enhancing across every sport but we're treating every sport as if it's cycling or baseball or athletics when in actual fact some of those drugs really uh, perhaps have no uh, performance enhancing effects so sometimes the rules don't help but if we also look at some of the problems that we've seen it's where there's money there has been a problem and where you have people who are prepared to turn a blind eye to what's going on because it could mean the difference between the success in that sport or of the country hosting a major event, um, certainly, you know, there's where there should be a wider responsibility. And the rules are moving in that direction. They are trying to ensure that the entourage surrounding the athlete will face the same kind of penalties. But it's often difficult because sport doesn't regulate the medical profession. Sport doesn't regulate some of the sports scientists that are, are gathering around uh, those athletes trying to offer them the shortcuts. And, and really, we need to have other professions looking at the problem and saying, this is not the kind of Hippocratic oath that you signed up to. This isn't the kind of professional code you should be uh, operating by and actually taking very, very strong action against those who are corrupting sport. All right, well, let's take a look then, uh, just for pause for a moment, to look at some of the reaction that we've been getting on Facebook on this topic. Keith Daniel tells us, here's the truth. A-Rod and other players have used performance-enhancing drugs for years until the government and media pressured the MLB into doing something about it. Does anyone really think that baseball didn't know what was going on during that magical summer of 1998? Jacob Etheridge says, why is it always baseball players here in America that get in trouble for this stuff the most? When are we going to catch athletes from other sports? And Eric Becker says, this is what you call money ball. No love for the game from a roid. Very succinctly there. I think we know what he's uh, talking about there. Uh, Dave uh, Zirin, how much of a role does, does, does uh, money play in, in all of this then, do you think? 
I, the, the elephant in the room is the fact that at this point, one out of three minor league baseball players is from the Dominican Republic and 27% of major league players are from Latin America. And of the players who were pinched in the biogenesis ring this past week, Alex Rodriguez is the only one to not have gone through the Dominican baseball pipeline. All the players were either from the Dominican Republic, a couple from Venezuela, one from Nicaragua, but they all went through the Dominican pipeline. Now, why is that important? Two reasons. One, the Dominican Republic has a poverty rate that's 40%. And two, steroids are legal and available over the counter in the Dominican Republic. And this is where Major League Baseball chooses to invest billions of dollars to develop talent so they can sign 15-year-old kids for $2,000. It's a highly exploitative system. It preys on the fact that the Dominican Republic has such high poverty rates and a legal steroid system, which opens itself up for all kind of abuse. And I would argue that Major League Baseball wants to have its anabolic cake and eat it too. And we need to talk about that. Vinny Milano, money talks and something else walks. I think you know what I mean there, but uh, is, does that pretty much sum it up for you? I would agree with that, but I think that what the, the biggest portion of that is the toll that it takes on, on the athlete's body. I mean, we keep talking about performance enhancing drugs. We don't talk about the debilitating aspect of this. I mean, Alex Rodriguez is a professional athlete. He's 39 years old. He's had two hip surgeries, two knee surgeries. I would argue that his body is breaking down because of some of the substances he may have been taking prior to you know, what's going on now. And I think that's a very important flip side to this. It does go on the player's shoulder. There may be this huge pipeline, and there's so many other people involved, but the person who's hurting themselves the most in the end is the athlete. And I, I think back to a, a professional football player by the name of Lyle Alzado, who was really tied up in really nasty steroids before they became the quote unquote refined nutrient supplement, you know, recovery tool that they are now. And uh, his whole body broke down and it, it was really linked to his steroid use. And I think that's really the question is the money worth your health. Uh, Michelle Varokin, I want to put this point to you. The last time we, we had this discussion about uh, doping in professional uh, sports on, on this program was a few months back uh, uh, with the, all of the scandals surrounding uh, Lance Armstrong. And the point that was made there by a couple of people was that um, back when, when, when he was uh, cycling in the Tour de France, it was, uh, the, 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 the riders there were, offering, uh, were operating under a different mentality, a, a, different, a different kind of morality, if you will, in that they didn't believe that they were they were cheating they were they were sort of in a different time so to speak are we kind of uh, imposing a, a, a 2013 morality on things that happened a decade ago and over a decade ago is that part of the problem well i would i would hope not and from what i've understood about the uh, major league baseball um situation it has very much been the players union that has um has engaged with the idea of there being a rigorous drug testing program and there has to be a penalty system because you know the point is being well made about the damage to the athlete's health um, uh, when they are forced into using these substances or if they're accepting treatments that they believe will en sort of lengthen their careers but in actual fact might actually shorten their lives and this is where we're getting to the point we have to ask ourselves if we're looking at some kind of gladiator type festival going on in front of us in a sporting arena where it really will be the, the last living man standing and that's not what we want from our uh, sports stars we see them as models of good health all right, just want to give the final word to you then, uh, Dave uh, Zirin. Well, and that, what, that's exactly why this needs to stop being a discussion about sports and competition and how to hit the most home runs, and it needs to be a discussion about public health because athletes put their bodies through tremendous rigors to play these games that entertain us, they should be entitled. Like, as the Hippocratic Oath said, doctors should be standing up to say, we need to get them the best possible treatment so their bodies can survive. Unfortunately, because this is all shrouded in shadows and in places like biogenesis, we get situations where athletes are abusing their bodies with steroids. So instead of using performance right. enhancing drugs to make themselves healthier, you get the opposite effect. All right, that's gonna have to be uh, the last word. Thanks very much for uh, what's been a great discussion. To uh, all of our guests, uh, Dave Zirin, Michelle Varokin, and Vinnie Milano. And thank you 
very much for joining us on this edition of Inside Story. Remember, if you want to send us your feedback, just email your thoughts to us at InsideStory at AlJazeera.net. I'm Hazem Seeker. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.